Hi and welcome to this month's uh, podcast from the London Lightning Process team. I'm Phil Parker and I've got over there Helen in, who's in Wales at the moment saying hi Helen. Hello. Uh, and this is our pre-Christmas, uh, one of our pre-Christmas podcasts so uh, Helen has a very exciting topic she'd like to introduce to you and we're going to talk around it for the next 15-20 minutes. So Helen what's the topic today? Right, so the topic I thought would be good fun today is all about socialising, speaking to people, interacting with people. Excellent. Well, um, there are many people out there who find this difficult, and this time of year, of course, is one of the things that really brings out when you have to go to cocktail parties and meet your you know, husband or wife's friends or, or, or college mates, uh, and how do we deal with that? And a lot of the podcasts we talked about, the lightning process, you know, about health, and the lightning process is very much about health. But health uh, in its biggest sense, so health means being whole, health means being happy uh, in your well-being in your body, being happy in your environment, in your relationships and so on. And there's a massive link between how happy we are and how healthy we are and how we interact with other people is one of the big things that costs our happiness. So, um, Helen, you good at interacting with people? Uh, I've got a lot better. <laughs> it was something uh, when I was young, I was incredibly shy. So it's something I did have to work on. But now I look forward to meeting people, and it's it's not it's not an issue for me anymore. But it, it was a challenge. Absolutely. So how how did you change that then? Um, I worked on confidence. I think more than anything, confidence in myself and confidence that I could have something to say and participate. So that was a key one for me. And also changing my mindset about what I wanted to achieve by going out. It was more coming from a place of just being calm about it and interacting with people and being interested. I think it's probably the main one. So one of the things that, that calls up is you said, you know, I was shy uh, and I realised I needed to be more confident. And I'm the same as you know, I was very, very shy when I was a kid. Uh, and the idea of me speaking in front of thousands of people was completely off the cards. And my mum uh, famously used to introduce me as, uh, hi, he's Philip, he's very shy to everybody, which of course didn't help very much. But one of the things he said was, you know, I worked on my confidence. Some people think that confidence is just, just is, you know, you just have this much or you have this much and it's just tough. You know, if you're born with lots of confidence, it's lucky for you. If you're born with poor confidence, uh, it's tough. So what do you say to that? Because that's what a lot of people say, I'm not very good in these kind of situations, I don't have confidence. Yeah. Well, I think like you said, again, you recognise being a shy, a shy child, and my mum did that to me as well. Um, so it is something that you can learn, it is a skill you can learn, and it's something that you can become, but you have to make the choice to do that. So I think a lot of it's about wanting to change and wanting to build your confidence is, is the starting point. And then it's looking for different strategies and different ways of learning it. And what for you is a, a good way of doing that? Yeah, I think one of the things that's interesting is a bit, little bit like when we were with phobias. So people have uh, you know, phobias to snakes and um, spiders and stuff. That the idea of being with a spider or a snake when you are phobic of it is like horrific, you don't want to do it. And I think it's the same with these kind of social situations. If you don't feel very confident, you don't really want to be there because all you can imagine is just going to be a horrific experience. So it's, it's realising that it's not about going into those situations and still feeling as rubbish as you do, because who would yeah. want to do that? It's about finding a way to change it. And so we'll come back in a minute to ways to change it. But one of the things that I often think about is, and you mentioned it, is uh, you know people can learn to be confident but mm -hmm. actually there's a, a much bigger conversation which is people were born confident actually we unlearn confidence and the, the story i often talk about is if you've ever had a kid or been a kid and that should include pretty much everybody who's listening to this is if you have a, if you have a small child and they're like two months old and they wake up in the middle of the night and they want something what do they do well they scream don't they and they don't kind of go oh you know don't know if I should really express myself someone might be upset or offended it's just a non-issue for them if they want something they express themselves clearly and they don't care who who hears it or doesn't hear it you know <laughs> so that tells us and I think that's a pretty much universal thing of kids that we all started out with confidence if if we define confidence as feeling that sense of having a right to be there expressing ourselves saying what we want to say and not really being 
over concerned about how people might respond to it. Now, obviously, everybody wants everyone to like themselves, you know, but that, as we also know, that doesn't happen. So when we're little kids, when you think about it, we do have, we're brimming with confidence. Again, when kids are a bit older, they will draw a picture, you know, and they'll, they'll draw a picture of uh, of the queen and go, hey, look, I drew a picture of the queen. And uh, it doesn't matter how good it is. They're just really excited about it. And they want, they want to show everyone, I'll just show you and you, and then I'll show you again. So we come from there. We come from that place, don't we, when you, when you think about it. And then something happens and it gets stamped out of as many of us. Uh, so remember, it's not so much... Uh, learning how to have confidence is more appropriate to say we're relearning how to be confident because we, we must have had it at some point. So how does one learn to be confident in social situations, for example? I think a main or a big thing is to stop analysing the situation and stop overthinking the situation that you're going into. If you can go into something from a point of being calm and relaxed about it, you're in a much better mindset to, to be able to engage with it. Whereas if you're constantly thinking and thinking and thinking, that starts to, to set off a whole host of other things. But stopping thinking about things is quite a tough thing to do, isn't it? Because as soon as you notice you're thinking about it, you notice you're thinking about it. I remember when I was a kid, I used to blush, I used to go red. And, um, you know, you're classically sitting in school, I don't know if you remember this, but people would have to read a passage from a book, oh. like two sentences each and you'd see it like a wall of death coming towards you. You knew that very soon. And what was interesting was about two or three people before it was your turn to speak, you'd start, if you were, I imagine you did as well, if you went red, you started to feel red before you even had to speak in anticipation. And as we know in the lightning process, embarrassment is a really great example of the mind-body connection, how by thinking it actually changes the blood vessels in our skin. Yeah, you're a really good example of that. Um, and what, what stopped me from blushing was I, I noticed how red I was. And then I caught, I think I must have caught my reflection in the mirror. And I discovered I wasn't as red as I thought. I thought it was like, you know, a massive beetroot, but I wasn't. I was actually unnoticeably, I wasn't red at all. But in my mind, because I could sense that warmth coming up. Yeah. I thought I was already shining like a you know, bright red thing in the classroom. And as soon as I realized that nobody had actually noticed that I was scared or embarrassed, it took a huge amount of my embarrassment away because part of embarrassment is about the structure of embarrassment is other people recognizing that you're embarrassed. It's very difficult to be embarrassed on your own. You know, if you're in your own in a room, it's quite difficult. You have to have somebody else to, to kind of embarrass yourself around and they have to notice it. So equally, if you're in a room full of people and it's completely black and dark, it's very difficult to get embarrassed because nobody can notice that you're embarrassed. And the same with confidence, that your confidence comes partly from what people's responses, you know, if you think that they are approving or unapproving of you. So anything you can do, as you say, to stop the analysis, to decide where you're gonna plonk your focus. Are you gonna focus on what's wrong with you, why you don't fit in, why this is difficult, that you've got nothing to say, that will just completely paralyze your, your neurological function. Or instead, move into a different way of being so what would be good ways for people to stop analyzing stop thinking and get themselves into a better space i was gonna say most of the analysis is about like you say everything that's going to go wrong so start to think about what if things could go really well you know what if there are some really interesting people what if there's an amazing bar <laughs> what if there's the things that would be really great about this this uh, situation so start to think about it in terms of what would be good to look forward to so you're using that ability to think but in a way that's going to be much more useful to you yeah and now what if is 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 a really important question and if you have anxiety or as we say in the learning process if you do anxiety which means you're engaging with thought processes of anxiety uh, then actually people use the what if a lot but they use it in a really negative way like what if and then a list of all the things that could go wrong but what we notice is that strategy of wondering about the future produces very particular feelings so if you wonder about the future in a very negative or disappointed way or anxious way then it produces the feeling of anxiousness but equally if you wonder about the future 
So the same process, but instead you focus on, and, and have to remember, of course, the future hasn't ha even happened yet. So it's all made up what we're wondering about. But if we wonder about the future in a positive way, it equally has a, an effect on our physiology and our nervous system, but in this case, in a very, very positive way. So it, it's quite interesting if you're, if you're have an effective way of becoming anxious, then actually you can use exactly the same neurology to become relaxed and confident because it's all about anticipating something that hasn't even happened yet and you know, all, all things are possible in the future you know when you go to a party there may be amazing people there may be dreadful people but we don't know yet so uh, as we stand here now you know in December whatever it is the 12th to 11th we don't know what's going to happen on the 27th to 24th we can imagine it and our imagination will predict all sorts of things for us but we're in charge of that we can make a choice so what things could people focus on that would be really useful for them to if they're going to be focusing and, and like Alan was saying stop and analy an analyzing probably not going to stop and analyzing but what you can do instead is analyze for the great things you can point your brain in the right direction so what would be some good things that people could think about that would help them to be more excited more calm more relaxed more confident I mean, it's, it's about thinking about things like the possibility of new experiences. It's starting to allow yourself to get excited about things, whereas maybe before you've suppressed that, is allowing yourself to have some excitement in your life. So I think that's always a, a, a useful one. And also, you know, think about how, how good you'll feel going in, putting a big smile on your face, and, and being open to, to meeting people. So I think it's about looking at those sorts of possibilities as opposed to, to ones that are not helpful to you. And I think the thing you said earlier as well about the why you're doing it is important. If you've got a reason for doing it that is bigger than your embarrassment or lack of confidence, then you'll do it. You know, There are all sorts of things that people do. And if you decide to take that on, then what's interesting is if you carry on doing what you're doing, then life is pretty much predictably the same. If, but if you want things to be different, then you have to step out and do something a bit different. We often say this in the lightning process and most other change processes. If you want change, you know, the possibility of change is almost endless. But you have to be ready to do something, something different. If you carry on doing whatever you're doing, you're going to get pretty much the same results. Yeah. And also, sometimes the best things are just outside your comfort zone. And it doesn't take long for that to become the new comfort zone. Mm. So it's, it's about allowing yourself to take that journey as well. So maybe we should finish off by just helping people and give them some kind of guided visualization of how to be comfortable and confident. So the first thing, and let's say if you listen to this, uh, if you're driving a car, which is unlikely because it's on video, but you know, could do, then then turn this bit off because it might be quite relaxing and we want it to focus on whatever you're doing and listen to it later at home. Uh, so what I'd like you to do is just take a few moments to just calm yourself down, to breathe in and breathe out and to relax. And as you relax, you can think about some times in your life, which we all have, where we've been calm and confident. So that might be time in your past when you were some really good friends or time when you were stroking a puppy or whatever it might be what for you Hannah would be a very relaxing time where you just felt very at ease and very at peace I think just chilling out in the front room with the dog mm. so whatever it is for you think about a time that for you is just relaxing you feel at peace and then also think about a time when you were with another person um, probably somebody who you are familiar with and you felt very comfortable with them it could be you know somebody from your family or a very very good friend or just someone you feel very at home with and just feel what that feels like and then all you need to do is connect that feeling to think about that feeling and the more you think about it the more you deepen that connection with it and then and you can listen to this as many times as you want you can imagine seeing an image of yourself at this forthcoming social event and you can imagine pouring those feelings into that you in that social event so that you see that you in front of you starting to fill up like pouring liquid into a vase you start to see them filling up with this feeling of calm ease 
And as you practice it, what your brain is doing is this thing we talked about earlier, this anticipation. It's starting to anticipate what that feels like to be that way. And then pay attention to three really important things. Firstly, that you that you've imagined at the party, how do they look? What do you see about them? Then notice what do they sound like? How's their voice? Because if somebody's calm and confident, their voice is very different from if somebody's very stressed. So notice their voice, the way they speak, the tonality, the way they engage with people. And then finally, become aware of how they feel, how they move. And as you do that, you can just slip into that you and just feel what it feels like to get a sense of what it feels like to be confident in those situations, dealing with the kind of conversations that naturally occur in these environments. What's fascinating is the more you listen to this little section of me talking you through it, the more your brain will use that ability to predict the future, to allow it to be comfortable and relaxed and confident. The more that you listen, the more confident you'll become in exactly the same way. That's the more that people listen inside their head to stressful conversations, the less relaxed they become. So that gives us a choice, which direction are we going to go in? Now, interestingly, of course, which part of, you know, if, if social situations haven't been your friend in the past, the, the part of your brain that's most exercised is the part that thinks about this in a difficult way. However, if we start to think and train our brains in this new direction, then through natural changes in neurological processing, this becomes normal for you. When I was a kid, I used to write um, a piece of paper. I used to write eights like this, you know, with two, two little hoops. And then I started to learn that, that special way that people have of doing it in a single loop. And uh, it took me a while to train myself out of that. But now I can write eights properly. <laughs> it took me a long time. I was quite a slow child at school, as well as being shy. But we can change these things, and we have this amazing ability to make change. Anything you'd like to add, huh? No, I just feel very, very good. <laughs> so uh, I hope you take advantage of this. Say, so listen to that last section as many times as you want, because you'll find each time you do, what you're doing is just pointing your brain in a new direction and it will make it much, much easier for you to be more and more comfortable. If you want any extra info on this, there's some stuff on the website. There's a whole uh, download you can get about relaxation. There's another one about confidence, particularly in those kind of social situations. We'll give you another insight on how to do it. Uh, if you've done the lightning process, you can probably adapt the tools of the lightning process to exactly this kind of thing. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, have a great Christmas, a great holiday, great season, and a great new year. And we're gonna, we'll be speaking to you soon. Say bye, Helen. Have a great Christmas. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>